up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day 15 of 3D printing. We've got a couple of different prints here. It's the same file, it's this I-beam shape, uh, but it was printed four different directions. So if we're going to consider my countertop as the build plate, one was printed facing straight up, one was printed down, one was printed on its side, and then the last one was printed kind of at an angle. And here's where print layers become a huge consideration, is the strength of the print. So if I were to look at deep dive, kind of look at this print, we can see that the layers are perpendicular to the direction of the I-beam. And that gives it some serious strength. So if I try to squeeze this I-beam, it does have a little bit of flex. That's the natural filament of that PLA. It doesn't resist a twisting motion pretty well. And then same thing for this direction. That's because all the forces I'm giving to are perpendicular to the layer direction. If I were to try to pull this, the I-beam itself has some structural integrity this way, so it's hard to pull against those layers. If we were to print it flat, so actually this is the bottom, if we were to print it flat, we would need some supports to print off the top of the I-beam. And this is why this isn't a very smart idea, is because our print layers are now in the direction of the forces that we give. So the print layers are going through this way, and notice, we heard it earlier, oop, there we go. Our print layer snapped in the direction of the force being given. So the direction of your print layers has a huge impact based on the direction of force it's going to receive. Let's see how this one holds up. So this one was printed flat. And we didn't need any supports on the top side because we had nothing overhanging. So this one is actually pretty secured on this I-beam. However, our feet over here, I think, are going to be the ones that give way. So my suspicion when I start to put some forces on this, either one of these feet or one of these feet are going to snap. And so let's see. Yep, there we go. We could see the direct <laughs> We lost three of the four. Uh, you can see that the direction of the print caused these legs to snap. So I'm going to give the same force. You can see my, my knuckles getting white. I'm giving the same force, or my fingertips. So the print layer has a huge impact. So if they are in the direction of force, it's going to fall apart. What happens if you can't print necessarily this way and you don't want to waste a lot of support? Another answer, it could be to print at a 45 degree. So this print at 45 degrees, so I'm going to take that support away. And if we look really close, you can see those 45 degree support lines. Now this is still not as sturdy as this one right here. As you can see, it has a little bit more play but it's probably less likely to snap. Twisting force mo motion's pretty good. Let's do the same thing over here. See, it's got about the same amount of play, but I think if I were to give this one a good squeeze like we did on the other ones, nope, it's holding up decently well. So let's do this. Let's hop on over to uh, Cura and look at this part and how I printed each of those directions. All right, now that we've seen the effect that layer directions can have, let's do a deep dive in unpacking and how to do it in Cura, or at least looking at those layers. So what I have right here is I have the I-beams in the four directions that we printed them in. First one, the most strong, was going directly upwards. Then we have two of our weaker, weaker layers that required a decent amount of supports, so wasted material and they actually didn't hold up very well. I didn't think they'd snap so aggressively, but they did. And then we have one printed at 45 degree angle. So I've already sliced this, and so we can preview what those layers look like. If we go down to the bottom, we can see that each of them have about the same surface area, except for the one on the way left, and there's a little bit more on the way right, I guess. 
but as we build those layers, notice the direction of the print. So our I-beam here on the way left-hand side, those print layers are going to be going perpendicular to the force applied to them, whereas these are going parallel. And the problem when you, your forces go parallel is that things tend to snap. And so that's why our three legs on the one, the second one from the left, that's why those three legs snapped off is because those layers were in the direction or parallel of the force. Same thing for that center beam. And you get a mixture between both worlds when you do that 45 degree angle. Ask your physics teacher about components and how forces can be applied in X and Y direction and why this, the one that's at a 45 degree angle, is kind of the mixture of both worlds. It has the kind of some structural integrity as if it was printed straight up versus uh, the per ones printed uh, horizontally. But here's what I'm going to say. If you can, and it tends to be the way that the print direction with the least amount of wasted support also happens to be, in my experience, the one that is the most structurally integ integrable. So what are we going to do here? You get to play around with this on what you want to do, but what I have found that when I print parts with the least amount of support, they tend to be the strongest. That's what I've got in my experience. You're welcome to show me a difference or bring in some case examples down in the comment section. Hopefully these videos are helpful. I'm kind of just journaling through my experiences with 3D printing and at least sharing some information that maybe you would want to hear. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if I'm doing something totally wrong, uh, let me know and I would love to journal that in. But you guys are awesome. Stay awesome. Please like and subscribe if these videos have been helpful. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.